Charlie Brewer is truly a pioneer of light tackle fishing and is regarded by many fishermen as one of the best light tackle bass men in the country. Charlie developed and originated the slider lure and the do-nothing fishing technique. Millions of fishermen have read Charlie's articles in leading magazines or his own publications that include a book and other instructional material on slider fishing. Charlie has also been the guest on many of TV's top fishing programs. His simple and easy manner of speaking and teaching the techniques of slider fishing makes him especially effective with everyone. Here he is, a member of the 100 living legends of American sport fishing, Charlie Brewer and his regular fishing pal, Foxy Griffin. Here is the originator and developer of the slider technique, Charlie Brewer. Foxy, I'm proud <laughs> to have you with me. And he's also an old time friend and an old regular fishing buddy. What we're trying to illustrate in the film on the lake is two or three things that we're gonna get into a little later on. We try to illustrate what we call sweeping the hook. Mm -hmm. This is what we do is when setting the hook, we sweep it to keep from breaking small lines. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna illustrate back cranking the, instead mm -hmm. of the drag system, mm -hmm. we're going to be the drag. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to try to illustrate playing with the fish in the water instead of the boat. And remember, with light tackle, you can't haul, you know, when you got a small lines. And we keep in mind that light tackle is sporting equipment. It's not mm -hmm. hauling equipment. So what we want the viewers to watch whenever we do show some fishing film, we want them to, to watch how we sweep the hook and how we back crank and play with the fish. What we call sweeping the hook, a long, slow sweep will not break small lines. Uh, jerking and snatching a small line cannot stand that kind of stress. So if you keep your pressures even, and it doesn't, and remember the hooks that you're gonna be using on this type of fishing are needle sharp, they're keen, it doesn't take much effort to penetrate them, so they'll penetrate in a hurry and just a long, slow sweep, and the fish feels the pressure, you're pulling, he's pulling, you're pulling, the fish is pulling, the hook has got to go somewhere and it will penetrate, and that's all the hook sweep you need to do. This is a little uh, Shimano, and it has a slow ratio. This little reel here probably only moves per turn, oh, about 16, 18 inches of line, if that much. Now some of the other reels I have here have a faster ratio. They'll move line up to almost uh, 20 inches to two feet per turn. So that means that when I give line by turning one turn backwards, that the, I'm letting out on this little reel hill, I'm letting out maybe 15, 16 inches of line. On a one with a fast ratio like most of us use, I'm letting out line maybe uh, 20 inches to two feet per turn. So you can back crank and let out line very, very, very fast. And the same way you can take it up. Now the reason that we use the back crank system rather than the drag that comes with them, I think that, th that we, the fishermen, is the best drag system in the world. I think that we do a lot better applying our own drag. Now if we depend on the drag system, and many times you hear the excuse uh, fishermen are always offering excuses about their drag system. They say the drag got lost, uh, you know, they're talking about losing fish, they said my drag got too tight or it got too loose, and uh, oh, I forgot to loosen it up or I forgot to tighten it. Well, what we do, we just tighten them down all the way and we have no drag and we just ply it by back cranking. And I think if you'll work on this here, that you'll find that it is a, a, the easiest and surest way of playing a fish. And if you get a fish on, Try to keep your rod, try to play him with your rod tip approximately that high or 10 o'clock high, somewhere like that. And if he gets down under the boat, you've got plenty of room. If he makes a surge, that you can drop the pole, the rod to him at the same time you're giving him line. And then when you, he lets off, you can work him back up to here, but always play him against the rod tip up here fairly high. Let, up, let the fish play against the action in the rod. And don't ever make this mistake 
of uh, pointing the rod to a fish. That is a no, 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 no with small lines. Ain't it right, Foxy? Right. And uh, so you just simply don't, with a light line, like a f four or six pound line, you don't get a sizable fish on and then point the rod right to him at the water. If you do, you can just kiss him by. If you'll, he'll pop that line. You can... Here's where you, if people get in trouble, a fisherman get in trouble with a four pound line. And we're using this four pound line to illustrate. Uh -huh. You know, that doesn't mean we fish it all the time. We no. do. How often do you fish four pound? I'd line? say uh, six pound, 50%, and four pound. 50%. Okay, you go about 50 50. I fish with you a lot, and I know uh, you use a lot of four pound most all the time. And I, I fish four pound. I think a little later we'll discuss this too, maybe 25% of my fishing, 75% six pound, and very little on eight pound. Mm -hmm. But anyway, where are we getting in trouble with a four pound line fisherman? And you and I are guilty too. We fail to tie back or trim back. Mm -hmm. We do. Now, keep in mind that if, if let's say it's a, this is a true four pound line. Mm -hmm. It's new, it's fresh. And you get a good knot. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's not fish. You've got, for all practical purposes, a true four pound line, right? Right. But after you fish this line a little while, and it gets a few nicks and bruises, mm -hmm. right down, usually from the where it's tied on the, the bait or the hook or lure, you'll feel them a first foot or two. All right, if you get a little nick of bruise in that four pound line, now that line has weakened and it's not a four anymore. It might become a two <laughs> at that little nick of bruise. Uh -huh. Or you're not, it's got worn uh -huh. from dragging over uh, rocks and gravel and structure. Mm -hmm. And maybe it's, your two, four pound is not a, two, uh, a four pound anymore, it's a two pound. Mm -hmm. If it gets bruised and nicked bad enough, it's down to one pound. Mm -hmm. So. What happens so many times, and people using a small line, they claim that you got popped off. Well, probably they did. I, I, I get broke off because in nine times out of 10, when I, I, in every case, I always, it's my fault, it's not the line. It's just that I just fail to tie back. Mm -hmm. And usually what we do, if you'll hold this, this is a good way, if you're too lazy to tie back, you take your bait when you come in, just hold your hand and run your hand up it like your line like that, you can feel the rough places. Mm -hmm. Or if you think it's pretty good, snug it. Mm -hmm. That's pretty That's pretty strong. That's everything a four should be. Mm -hmm. We go ahead and fish. But a lot of time you can feel this way and you'll feel a little nick, maybe right there. And if you look, you'll see it. Mm -hmm. And then if you try breaking it, it'll break right there. Uh -huh. And it'll probably break it. If it's a four pound line, it'll probably break it two pounds or three pounds or a pound and a half, mm -hmm. you know. And so, uh, so do check your line and keep it trimmed back, especially the smaller the line you use, the more often you need to trim. There's a variety of rods and reels you can use for slider fishing. Suppose we show our viewers what we mean by Okay, that. Foxy, we'll sure do that. Okay, now, we mentioned that we can use push button spinning or closed face spinning. Mm -hmm. It's called both, which is very good with this type of method. It uh -huh. can be very useful. Now, and a nice thing about this push button spinning, hey, it's 100% backlash and line, line proof on tangling up a line. You can't only mess up a line casting that stuff, can you? Uh, right. All right, like casting equipment, a lot of fishermen prefer to use this rather than this spinning tackle. Mm -hmm. uh, this, this can be used too, especially if you uh, got a uh, light enough reel and uh, uh, light enough rod and the, the reel, the whole light line and everything. You can't throw maybe the very lightest uh, slider rigs or light tackle rigs with it, but you can throw some mighty light ones, mm -hmm. or uh, ones that uh, are not too heavy. Mm -hmm. uh, now this right here is open face spinning, and this is what we highly recommend, of course. We'll talk about these things a little bit more later on. But uh, this is uh, open face and this is what we recommend. But all three of them, push button, push button, the casting, and open face can be used. But this, I think, is proven to be the best piece of equipment to use for this type of uh, fishing or light tackle fishing in general. A lot of fishermen like to use light casting with light tackle fishing, but if the bait is too light, and we're gonna, we'll get into that later, we're gonna push a very light lure, you know, way on down to 16th ounce and left, mm -hmm. Then it's very hard to cast them on casting equipment, or even if you use a light line and, and, the, and the right reel and equipment. So really, the most desirable is equipment like this, open face mm -hmm. spinning. And Charlie, I noticed this one has a gold line. Right, right. 
Uh, you you asked me why? Yeah. Huh? Uh huh. Why? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Because old codgers like me are getting where I can't see good. I need it. <laughs> really? I need the help. Uh -huh. Now, I've, I've used gold line quite a bit. I've been toying with it for the last two or three years, experimenting with it. Mm -hmm. Now, normally, a fisherman won't use a gold fluorescent line or a yellow line because it sights them out up here. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't have any confidence in it. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I've, been, I've always been the same way. Mm -hmm. So. But I find out that really I've worked with it and experimented with it by using gold line and using the clear. This is high visibility uh, clear line here. Mm -hmm. uh, really, I can't tell any difference in my fish catch. I catch just as many bass on the gold line as I do the clear line. Mm -hmm. uh, they hit it just as quick. Now, sometimes up until recently it psyched me out so what I'd do, I'd put a clear leader on the thing. I see. And I'd run the leader about the length of the rod, down to about, the, not be about the reel down here. Mm -hmm. Well, that separated, that, that separated the bait mm -hmm. by, say, four or five feet, you know. Mm -hmm. So that, that made me happy. But I found out, by golly, by just tying the, the bait on there that I do this as well. So goal line is just super, if, in, for seeing it, it's real easy to see. And, you know, that's a big advantage. You need to be a line watcher mm -hmm. in slider type fishing and, and, and light tackle fishing. You need to watch your line and know what it's doing. And a line like this is just so much easier to see. Mm -hmm. Charlie, uh, this is four pound test. Why do you prefer the four pound test? Well, uh, fact, I don't, uh, I don't prefer it uh, necessarily. Uh, I use a lot of four pounds, mm -hmm. but I'd say on a year-round basis, I use, uh, I guess, uh, six pounds line most of the time. I'd say 75% of the time. I use four pound uh, line maybe 23% of the time, mm -hmm. and I use eight pound line about 2% of the time. Mm -hmm. So I use very little eight pound line. Then all my fishing was four and six pounds. Mm -hmm. But there are times when a four pound line is, is will just save your day. Mm -hmm. it, it's, I've had many, many experiences to where I simply couldn't get going with a six or eight pound line. I'd plug on a four and get in business. Mm -hmm. And so I got one of my best examples. I could I could talk about a many, a many trip where a four pound saved the day. Foxy, let me say a little something about this, uh, the handle we have on this, uh, this rod. Uh -huh. This is what we call a Tennessee handle. I see. And what we do, we tape the reel on to the handle. Uh -huh. It has no reel seat uh -huh. or, or uh, any any type of thing like that. Mm -hmm. Now the reason we like that, the tape and cork is a lot more comfortable. Feels good. It feels good. It's comfortable. Mm -hmm. Now it also cuts a little weight, mm -hmm. you know, and we're trying to get rid of all the weight we can because we like we like these things to be light and easy fishing, easy casting and, and non tiring, you know, sure. relax. Okay. Now, when you tape your reel on, of course, you line it up properly, and you can move it, for example, on this longer handle, uh, you can move the reel up forward if you like more handle behind you where you tape the reel on, or mm -hmm. you way back or middle or wherever. Mm -hmm. I, personally, I like mine back about where I don't have much much hanging over back to the back. Right. Because I get some more freedom of wrist movement if I got on a coat or a jacket or something in the winter, see. Back in the... Uh, Early days when I started fishing, well, we referred to all, uh, well, crankbaits are gone now, we call them plugs. Uh -huh. All right, we had plugs and we had baits with spinners. We didn't call them spinner baits, they had spinners. Uh -huh. And then we did have top water surface lures, we call uh -huh. them that. Well, nowadays, you know, it's plugs are called crankbaits. Uh -huh. All right, things with spinners called mostly are referred to as spinner baits. Uh -huh. Mostly a spinner type lure, it's a spinner bait. Mm -hmm. That is popular among the bass fishermen. Mm -hmm. Then you still have your top water lures oh, and everything. Yeah. And then a newcomer made its appearance so about 30 years ago, uh, somewhere in that area about the worm come in, plastic worm. Uh -huh. Well, when it come on, then we had something we could add. They had worm fishing. Mm -hmm. You'd either, now you're crankbait fishing, spinner bait fishing, top water or worm fishing, mm -hmm. right? Well, the way I look at it is a couple of more newcomers has come on. That's slider fishing, 
Now remember these, when, when the fisherman says he's crankbait fishing, he, that indicates he's, he's fishing a certain way, a certain type mm -hmm. of lure, right? Mm -hmm. Or spinnerbait fishing. Mm -hmm. He's he not talking about a brand, he's just right. talking about a type of fishing, mm -hmm. or topwater fishing. Mm -hmm. Well nowadays, you have, later come slider fishing, and then come flipping. Mm -hmm. So I think you've got some newcomers <clears throat> that's come in on the scene, and slider fishing is, is, we're not talking about a bait, we're talking about a type of fishing, a method of fishing. Charlie, let's go out to the lake now and demonstrate sweeping the hook, or to put it another way, sweeping the hook is nothing more than a slow, long pull of the rod. Charlie, why and when did you come up with this slider fishing? Well, Foxy, I'll tell you what. Uh, you know, I've been looking for a better way of catching fish all my life. And uh, why I come up with it? So I could catch more fish. Good answer. And, right. <laughs> i tell you what, I, uh, you know, I've spent what seems like as much time on uh, water as I have land and, and chasing the bass mostly and always looking for a better way of catching more fish. Mm -hmm. And uh, so <clears throat> I came up with this slider technique, oh, oh, I guess 20, 25 years ago. And I worked with it for a number of years before we ever put it on the market to see if we could uh, convince somebody else it worked. So it was, it was a long time ago that we came up with it. And uh, like I say, the, it was uh, uh, looking for a, after I went into light tackle and up my fish catch quite a bit, but going to light tackle, I was trying to up, up it again and looking for an easier way to catch fish. And, and fishing all my life, I found out with using conventional tackle, which uh, like I've said earlier, I love, uh, I had too many fishless eyes and too many fishless gaps mm -hmm. in, my, in my days. In other words, I get on the water maybe daylight and uh, catch fish up till eight or nine o'clock in the morning and then I had all day and then from eight or nine to four in the afternoon, I couldn't buy a fish and had that long layover of, uh, and before I could start fishing again and catch a few more. Well, with the slider fishing and light tackle, uh, by golly, we just keep catching them all through the day. We have to use some basics and fundamentals, don't we? Well, slider fishing is, uh, is yeah, that's right. Before you can learn slider fishing, you've got to do your homework and lay your groundwork. You've got to learn your basics and fundamentals. Now, it's that way with any kind of job or any kind of thing you go at. You've got to learn the basics and fundamentals. Now. When, uh, you say, when it was developed, I believe you asked me. Uh -huh. uh, and why? Mm -hmm. Well, I've, I've talked about both of them a little bit. Mm -hmm. But uh, it all came about, came about a number of years ago when I was uh, observing these small minnows under my boat one day. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and in watching these small minnows, which is the number one food fish of the bass family, and the bass is the one we... Uh, talking about the largemouth, smallmouth, and Kentucky bass or spot. Mm -hmm. uh, I just wondered, uh, at that time, to my knowledge, no one had a lure on the market or a method that that acted like those little minnows. Now, minnows, like I say, is 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 a natural thing and, and number one food fish of the bass family. So I thought, well, wouldn't it be one of what would happen if I could make a lure and manipulated in such a way that it acted like those minnows. If, if so, I figured that I'd have a better chance of fooling Mr. Bass uh, into what I, thinking what I had was for real. So I went to work on that idea, and by golly, guess what? It worked like a charm. Really? And by using the right uh, little lure contraption or tool, and manipulate it in the right manner with this little rod and reel, which we'll go through later on, the techniques. Mm -hmm. uh, my fish catch immediately went up again. In fact, then I began to catch more fish than I'd ever caught in my life, and I was, this is what I'd really been looking for. And another fringe benefit of this type of thing, uh, it worked year round. It worked uh, spring, summer, fall, and winter. Charlie, is this the type of equipment you use for slider fishing? This uh, little rod and reel here? Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is, uh, 
This is what I use. This is what we highly recommend for slider fishing. Now this is an open face uh, spinning outfit, if you want to call it. This, mm -hmm. this is a, uh, by the way, a little slider rod that we build at our company. I highly recommend open face spinning for slider fishing, this type of equipment. Small lines are very effective at times. Mm -hmm. And while I'm on lines, let me say this too, Foxy. Uh, we don't use a small line, I don't think, I don't use a small line because of the visibility. You know, you say, well, you know, they can't see a four pound line as well as they can a six. Can't see mm -hmm. a six as much as eight. That's not the rain, main reason I use a small line. The main reason I use it, it, it casts so much pretty. Mm -hmm. It's so much, you know, if your bait's real light, you just got to have a light line to cast mm -hmm. it out there. And sometimes you, you have to have a four or a six, you know, or mm -hmm. a real light line. I usually say, use the heaviest line you can get away with or use the lightest line you can get away with. Mm -hmm. But we usually use it because it casts pretty. Then another thing, I think on a light line, uh, like a four pound line, and, and like I say, I don't use it all the time. Mm -hmm. I use it a whole lot mm -hmm. when I have to. Uh, it lets your, your bait work and flex better. The lighter the line, <coughs> the, lead, the better it lets that little that lure a little bait work in a very natural manner. The heavier the line, the more it'll have a tendency to stiffen it up and choke it up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I like a light line because it lets the bait work real pretty. Mm -hmm. It casts real pretty. It's easy to cast. Why this uh, four inch worm? Oh, why the four inch worm? <laughs> okay. <coughs> well, Foxy, I, I could, there again, I could talk for hours. Catch more fish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, to make a long story short, I just simply catch more fish. <laughs> now, in experimenting with these slider techniques for years, I have experimented with all size worms. And I've caught, been fortunate enough to catch fish with all size worms. Mm -hmm. But four inches seems to be the magic length. It seems like I just catch, and most all my fishing buddies and worlds of fishermen agree, we just simply catch more fish on a four-inch worm, a smaller worm. And that is the big reason for, for that <coughs> length. Mm -hmm. Now, as we get into the slider techniques a, a little bit more, you might notice the design of this worm has got a flat tail. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll tell you why after a while. We, 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 we want to do nothing action, mm -hmm. so we don't want a tail with a lot of action. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason we designed it this way. Mm -hmm. And another reason for the four inch worm, if you've, you know, in your lifetime, you've cleaned many a bass. Because now you catch a lot of bass. Mm -hmm. And you keep some to eat now and then, I do too. It seems that 95% of the food in their stomachs, even if it's a big bass, is no longer or no bigger than your finger. Just about that size mm -hmm. right there. Have you noticed that? Mm -hmm. sure Most have. of the food is small. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes a bass tries to swallow something half his size. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. that's true. But that's an exception. But most of the food is, is, mm -hmm. is like that, even in a, in a lunker bass. Mm -hmm. So really, if you think about it, this little four-inch worm is closer to the size that a fish eats mm -hmm. and than, than uh, any other size, really. Mm -hmm. This is what slider fishing is all about, the slider techniques. Mm -hmm. We try to make this thing act like the real thing, or act like something real, like nature. Mm -hmm. A minnow in swimming, they, they, they suspend in the water almost lifeless. Mm -hmm. Do they not? They sure and, do. And when they get ready to go somewhere, I mean to swim or move, they just barely wiggle their little tails and, and they just slide and glide through the water just straight as narrow. Mm -hmm. it, and you can see hardly no movement whatsoever, just the slightest bottom of movement and they go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now you never see a man go through the water like that <laughs> or like that <laughs> unless he's being chased. And it gets a little wild. Well, you right. get wild and red then <laughs> if, you know, if a bass is chasing him. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, at times like that, bass are on a, on a wild feeding spree, mm -hmm. you know, and they, they claim that bass are only active on a real feeding spree about five or ten percent of the day, which mm -hmm. 
You know, I've noticed in my experience, I, I agree. Mm -hmm. That's about right. But like us humans, we only feed a small mm -hmm. percentage of the day. Right. So during that time, uh, you know, almost anybody can catch bass. You can catch them with anything you want to, mm -hmm. almost any kind of lure. Mm -hmm. And you can't, but I'm never, and most fishermen are not lucky enough to be there at that hour or time that they're eating it up. Mm -hmm. Usually I have to fish when they ain't biting, mm -hmm. you know. So, so and back to this, when you, if you notice the, those little minnows, as they swim around, they, they have a, what we call a do-nothing action. That's where the word do-nothing comes from. Mm -hmm. And they, they just slide, and swim, and glide right through the water. Mm -hmm. That's where the word slider comes mm -hmm. from. They slide right along. Mm -hmm. But they seem to have hardly any action whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So what we do, we manipulate this in such a way that we try to make it act just like those little minnows, mm -hmm. like the real thing. Now, this has no action built into it whatsoever. And if we work it in a do-nothing manner, and we don't add any action. Mm -hmm. Well, you say, where in the world does it get any action? How it can do it to get any? Mm -hmm. And okay, if we hold it up like this, and we hold it perfectly still. Can't do it. And I hold it indefinitely, or you, or any of the fishermen or viewers <laughs> out there. It's impossible to hold that worm perfectly, perfectly still. Now this is the nervousness in your body transferring uh -huh. through this soft material, and it, now there, if you'll notice, the body or tail section will always wiggle, jiggle, weave, mm -hmm. or have just a little motion on mm -hmm. that. This is nervousness. Yeah. Now if we hold the rod tip, if you hold a rod tip out in a do-nothing manner, uh -huh. and we hold it out here, and try to hold it perfectly still, that rod tip will always be wiggling uh -huh. a little bit. We can't keep it still. Now, as we work this lure through the water, and we'll show that just a little later, in such a way, do nothing manner, and this lure comes through the water, the natural nervousness of our body transfers through the rod, plus down the line, and of course the rod's got some natural nervousness, and so we're transferring it. Mm -hmm. And this goes down, hits the lure, and this little lure will have just a little nervous quiver to it, mm -hmm. with us doing nothing. Besides, if you're fishing in a boat, the slightest movement of the boat from the waves and the motion of the water will cause the rod tip to go up and down and, and it will automatically put action on it without you, while you're trying to keep it off. Mm -hmm. The least bit of current, of wind movements, will also add action. So you can't keep the action off this thing the more, I don't care if you, how much nothing you do and how mm -hmm. much do nothing you do, you can't keep him from wiggling or moving just a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I think with this thing sliding through the water, when Mr. Bass observes it, what he observes, he observes a very slight movement, just about what he sees in a minnow mm -hmm. as he swims along. Mm -hmm. No, just a, hardly any action whatsoever. Mm -hmm. It's almost like the real thing. Like now, it may not look like it, but he acts like it. But we're trying our best to make him think what we got is for real. Uh -huh. And we, we'll manipulate it and rig it to where we imitate these little men or swimming. We imitate these things falling off the trees. Uh -huh. And believe me, if the fishermen and viewers will believe me, if you do this, you will be able to increase your fish catch a whole, whole lot. Where you used to catch one fish, uh, I'll assure you, you learn to do it this way, you'll be catching two or three times more fish. Mm -hmm. You've noticed that. Mm -hmm. In other words, go back to nature. Try to make your lure act like the real thing. When they get inactive and get sluggish and dormant and they won't bite and, they, and everything I believe in is petting them, mm -hmm. sweet talk them, finesse them, feed them dessert. In other words, <laughs> less, less just... And but that way, in delivering the the thing right to the old bread basket, and make it easy for them, and and this way we've done it this way, and we have increased our fish catch a whole lot by taking this approach rather than the. You know, Charlie, I notice a lot of my buddies use different slider techniques, but they all seem to work. They all produce bass. Uh, your technique has worked mighty good for me. 
as well as thousands of other fishermen. Suppose you show us right now slider fishing technique your way. Okay, Foxy, I'd be glad to. You know, uh, we've covered uh, the whys and, uh, and uh, uh, why we slider fish in this way, and uh, we've covered the uh, basics and fundamentals, and uh, kind of uh, we've kind of laid the groundwork and kind of done our, our homework. So uh, the bottom line is uh, is how you do it. So that's what we're going to try to do right now. We're going to try to show you how to do it right out here with this uh, in the water tied up right here. So anyway, uh, now there's two basic slider techniques. One of them is the study, do nothing, retrieve, and one of them is the pull and drop. Now, the study, do nothing, retrieve can be uh, uh, fished uh, super slow, which we'll illustrate in a minute on the bottom. Uh, it can be fished uh, at medium speeds, a little faster, and, uh, and, and uh, maybe a little faster than that, and that's kind of what we call, that's midwater fishing for suspended bass. Now the pull and drop also can be fished super slow, which we're really just crawling the lure uh, along every inch of the bottom, or it can be uh, uh, fished a little bit faster, uh, medium speeds, and even faster than that, depending on the mood of the fish and how active they are. Uh, but first, let's cover uh, the simplest slider technique of all, uh, and one of the probably the easiest to learn, easiest to do, and the, probably uh, one of the most effective, and that's uh, study retrieving the, uh, the lure right on the bottom, uh, right across the bottom with a reel only. Uh, we'll be applying no action, we'll it'll be a do nothing action, we won't use the rod, as I'll show you in a minute, and we'll uh, using a little uh, 16th ounce spider head, spider slider head, rigged on the four inch slider worm. And uh, here's something if you don't remember or don't learn anything else about slider fishing, remember one thing the lighter, the better. Consistently, on a year round basis, the lighter, the better. I'm talking about a 16th ounce uh, and even less. Sometimes we trim a little bit of that off. But if we keep it real light, you'll never go wrong. Now remember, you never go wrong by keeping a, a slider rig real light, but you can go wrong by keeping it too heavy. So right now, we've got a little 16th ounce, and we're going to use it to illustrate these techniques. Now, when do you use the heavier lures, heavier heads? Uh, on a special occasion, let me mention this. Uh, maybe on uh, when the fish are very deep on very windy days or you're fishing a river where there's a lot of current obviously we need maybe something a little bit heavier to kind of get down there and help us out but consistently as I said the lighter the better now another time we use a slightly heavier heads is when the fish are very active uh, when they are not too fussy and they're easier to catch we can use a slightly heavier heads and speed up our, 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 our rhythm or our technique and still catch fish, but when it gets tough and it gets uh, the going gets hard, you cannot beat a light lure. Keep it light. So this is a little 16th ounce spider head on the four inch worm. So the first technique I'm going to illustrate, and like I said before, is the simplest technique in the world. Uh, it's retrieving right across the bottom with a reel only. Now keep in mind. Let me say this before I start on that. The slider fishing is equally effective on largemouth bass, smallmouth bass, and Kentucky bass. And Kentucky bass are commonly called spots here in the south. So it works good on all fish, and particularly the largemouth bass on a year-round basis, you're probably ahead to stay on or near the bottom for the largemouth bass, particularly when the water is not too, too deep. We're talking about depths of uh, five, six feet, seven, eight feet on down to 15. So if you keep your bait on or near the bottom, you'll be fish ahead, when, especially when fishing for the largemouth bass. So here's what, here's what we do. We just simply make the cast to the likely structure, and the structure could be uh, a good uh, bank, channel bank, uh, could be an offshore hump, a bar, whatever it is, and we simply let the lure sink 
to the bottom and we wait on it and we in other words the, the lure may be hitting in five or six foot of water and remember eighth ounce will sink approximately one foot per second or sixteenth is going to sink a little slower and when it gets down on the bottom we, get, we just simply take up the slack you can kind of watch your line you can tell when it hits the bottom you see your line go slack or limp and we just simply hold the rod very still at about nine or ten o'clock high like that and we just work the bait right along the bottom with the reel only. I'm not, I am not using the rod. I am not moving the rod. It's all done with the reel. And I, and I wind just slow enough or just fast enough that I can feel the bait in perfect contact with the bottom at all times. And whenever you don't feel the bottom, remember the bait could be stair stepping into deeper water. If you, the boat out where the buoy is, the water could be getting slowly deeper all the time coming off of a channel drop. It's much like a stair step, like that. So as you work the bait toward you, you might have to slow down even more to keep it in touch with the bottom. And if you're working it just real slow, I can feel this, this bait now, this little slider rig right on the bottom. But when I don't feel it, it feels like I've lost the bait it's, it's free falling probably into deeper water. So I just stop my retrieve and wait till it goes to the bottom again. I kind of keep my eye on the line. It's important to be a line watcher. When the line goes a little bit limp, I just simply start my slow retrieve again, just very slow, keeping it in touch with that bottom at all times. And remember, the deeper the water, the slower you're going to have to go to keep it down there. And of course, the lighter the head, the 16th ounce, you're going to have to go slower to keep it on the bottom than you would an eighth ounce or a quarter ounce. So it's just very, very slow. And remember, we're trying to crawl the, the bait by going super slow. Now I stop. I don't feel the bait anymore. I stop. Let it swim on down. And then I just go, I feel it on the bottom now. And when I don't feel it, I just slow down and stop and just let it hunt the bottom right on down. Just very, very slow. Now what the, what the bait is doing, it is literally crawling over every inch of the bottom. If you go slow enough with your reel, and remember, we kept the rod still, we did it all with the reel. It's a very simple technique, anyone can learn it. The bait is literally dragging and crawling across every inch of that bottom if we do it slow enough. Now, like I said, Remember, as you come down a channel drop on a lot of structures, as water gets deeper towards the boat or your drops, it was stair step. The water stair step, much like a stair step. They're shelving right on down. Well, when your bait comes along and it falls off a stair step or a shift, dropping deep water, naturally you won't feel the bottom. So just stop your retrieve and, and just wait and let it go on down till you feel the bottom again. And then when you do, just slowly crawl it along until you miss it, and then just stop and let it hunt the bottom again. Now, remember, in shallow water, you can go just a hair faster keeping on the bottom. As the water gets deeper, you've got to go slower and slower and slower. So what we're doing, we're trying to cover just every little stair step and every little inch of that bottom. Now, keep in mind that the bass, the bass we're trying to peel to, are lazy and active dormant bass. Bass that won't uh, go out of the way at all uh, to catch food or anything. And we're trying to deliver this food right to the old no bass's old nose or bread basket. In other words, we're trying to make feed him dessert. We're not trying to, we don't want him to work for it. We're going to deliver it right to him. And so this is why we want to go slow and keep it dangling in front of him for long periods of time and make it easy for him to take. It's just like delivering dessert to your nose. If you deliver it up there and dangle it long enough, usually a person will take it every time, and I think a bass is the same way, especially some bass. So we're just petting them and going right along just as slow and easy as we can. We're sweet-talking them, and, and we're trying to keep the thing dangling right in front of his nose. Now remember, as I said, this is a super method for inactive bass, and bass that seem to be idle, lazy, a dormant, or in other words, bass that won't bite. And remember that we, most of the time, have to fish 
of a fish or a bass that are not that are not active. We're not always lucky enough to be there when they're eating it up, and that only represents when they are eating it up. As the authorities say, and I agree with them, that only represents five or ten percent of the day. So most of the time, we have to grind them out the hard way. And slider fishing—that's what it's all about. Slider fishing was developed to for tough conditions uh, in tough lakes and and to catch them when they just seem to not to be biting because when they're active and biting real good we can catch them on uh, almost any way we want to fish in a, in, a, in a number of different ways so what we're trying to do we're trying to appeal to the fish that won't bite is there as an old saying among slider fishermen all over this country in foreign countries and i've heard them say it a many a time uh, they say when it gets tough go to a slider that was a great illustration charlie i love that method right there and you know slider fishing is not a rock'em sock'em method but the most important thing it produces bass and suppose right now you show us another one of my all-time favorite methods the pull and drop uh, you're right foxy uh, slider fishing is not a rock'em sock'em uh, method at all it's a slow easy way of doing things and it's non-tiring and relaxing and uh, so it's, 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 it's just the opposite of, of really working yourself to death. We just slow everything down and just take it easy, and we find it very productive. Now, slider fishing, if I may add, is not perfect for a long shot. And it is not a, the slider lure is not a magic bait or a success from a fancy package. I don't know of any method or any lure that's perfect. And, uh, but I, one thing that I will assure you, I promise you, that if you learn this method of fishing, you'll find it one of the easiest and simplest ways that you'll ever experience of taking fish consistently. But like I say, nothing is perfect, but you'll find this consistently to be a real good producer for you. And it, like I say, it's very simple to learn. That's what we're trying to go through here. Now, before I get into the next technique, the pull and drop, which the foxy there you love so well, you know, that's one of your favorites. Uh, let me say this, that a bass, uh, is an extremely simple creature of nature. There's nothing fancy about a bass. I don't think it never has been, and the food that a bass feeds on is also very simple creatures of nature. So all we're simply trying to do, we're simply trying to make our little lure act natural and lifelike and like the real thing. We're not trying to complicate anything because, as I said, a bass is not complicated. The food he eats is not complicated. So we just try to keep everything simple and try to make everything look natural and act natural. Okay, I'll go out this time and let's assume it's it's got down to the bottom. Okay, and now I'm going to just slowly pull and drop it. This is more or less what Fox was talking about a while ago. And I take up the slack and just pull it a little bit like that. Stop. Let the bait swim down deeper. Take up a little slack. Just pull it along with the rod. Just pull it and stop, let the bait drop towards the bottom or on the bottom, and just pull it a little bit like that, stop, and let the bait go on down deeper. And remember, if we come out in deep water, we have to slow that thing down a little bit if we want to keep it down there real deep or near the bottom, just pull it a little bit like that and stop, let it swim on down, just pull it a little bit like that and stop, just doing it a little, so real slow. All right, now what the bait is doing now, it's kind of hopping instead of crawling every inch of the bottom it's kind of hopping just a little bit it's just going along just skipping just a little bit of the bottom like that just like that now when i was dragging along with the rod it's doing just it's covering almost every inch of the bottom like the study do nothing retrieve with the reel but now with a little slow pulling drop it'll stop and just hop a little bit like that now if i speed this pulling drop up on this same cast here i'll just just pull it a little bit faster like that. Pull a little bit faster and stop, let it hunt the bottom, and pull a little bit faster like that. And I'm doing it a little faster. Now the bait is going along like this and making a big hop. Like, like that. Like that. Okay, now when the fish are very active, uh, when, they're, when they're feeding and active, you can speed everything up like that and, and catch fish. There's really no use in even petting them 
uh, like real slow because it's not necessary. They'll hit it on a little faster movement. So when the fish are a little bit active, you can fish a little bit faster. But whenever that fails for you, a little bit faster fishing, go back to super slow and keep that head extra, extra light. Charlie, we probably catch more bass in midwater than we realize because you know that little 16th ounce crappie head we like to use? It just floats around out there and a lot of bass pick mine up before it has time to get to the bottom. Bass do suspend for many reasons. Uh, the temperature of the water, the, uh, the oxygen uh, level in the water, the barometric pressure changes, uh, the elements, the uh, thermocline, uh, times of the year, just many reasons they can suspend. So bass are not necessarily always on the bottom. The fishermen uh, learn to play with the fish in the water and take it easy and keep the pressure off and, and, and they don't ever overhaul because with light tackle you want to keep in mind that light tackle is always sporting equipment. It is not horsing equipment. So back to the suspended fish. This is an excellent technique. Let me show you one or two of the techniques that you can use that we like to use. Uh, we just simply make the cast of the likely structure. As soon as the bait hits the water, we just start in with a retrieve, let's say uh, about that fast. Going around about one second per revolution of the handle, something like that. It's all relative. Now the, that little light lure, we're using that for an illustration, may be swimming just a few feet below the surface, maybe just three, four, five feet deep. Okay. Now we're what we're doing, we're fishing for suspended bass, bass that may be suspended up high. We call this, we call this sliding high. Okay, if, if, uh, if that doesn't work after we give it a fair try, we get no action or no activity at all, uh, we simply present the lure again, and this time, uh, as soon as it hits, we just come in the same way, but we, now we slow it down a little bit more. Now what we're doing now, we're probing a little bit deeper. By slowing the retrieve down, the bait is traveling just a little bit deeper than it was before. And obviously, if I keep, if I go slow it out, cast out, and come in even slower, it's going to run deeper and deeper. So you can probe the different depths by the speed of retrieve. Now remember, when you're fishing along slow like this, or pretty slow, or maybe a little faster, uh, the bait is not on the bottom. It's somewhere above the bottom. And what we're doing, we're working it at different depths, probing for suspended fish or midwater fish. And the slower, the little faster you retrieve, the little shallower the bait swims or slides through the water. The slower you retrieve, the deeper it goes. Now if you go super slow, you're about right back on the bottom again, like we've been through before, you're really crawling every inch at the bottom if you just go super, super slow. And with a little 16th ounce head, you can fish the bottom in fairly deep water. The only difference is, being it's so light, it takes it longer to get down there and you gotta be more patient. What we like to do sometimes, you come back to this little thing here, we like to take the side cutters there and trim, trim part of the lid off of this. And we actually make this 16th ounce even lighter. And, and by that way, when we present it out there and, and work it real slow with a slow, steady retrieve or the slow pull and drop, it will swim through the water even slower. And we find on those dog days when the, things, the fish really get stubborn and hard to catch, even by cutting it down even less weight than what it has there, we seem to be able to trigger bass that we can't catch any other way. And fishing in... Uh, shallow lakes like the lakes in the state of Florida, some of these lakes uh, where the water is mostly just three, four, five, six feet deep and a lot of heavy cover. Uh, we use nothing more than this little uh, 16th ounce, either this and the spider head. And most of the time we prefer to trim half the lead off of this with our side cutters or knife or file or something. We reduce it, uh, the weight down to where it's just practically nothing and just literally let it float around in that heavy cover and this also works real good in any kind of heavy cover. The lighter they are, the more snag free they are, and the more they ease over stuff without snagging and hanging up. Charlie, I got a question. Where's the best place to fish for suspended bass? Foxy, uh, 
the best, like I said, can suspend anywhere, any time of the year that I found out in my experience. However, percentage-wise on the largemouth bass, you're usually probably ahead most of the time, stay on or near the bottom, or fairly deep for him. However, like we said before, they can pick it off in midwater. Now, we do real good on suspended fish around bridges, uh, highway bridges, and the riffraff that comes around the bridge, uh, these pillars or concrete piers that support the bridge, uh, we, we fish suspended around those, and uh, we catch a lot of fish fishing this bait with the slow steady retrieve or the slow pulling drop and keeping it real light, and, and we fish, catch our most of the fish there suspended. Now, a lot of time that water around those bridges can be 25, 30, up to 60, 70 feet deep, but we only find the fish sometimes just five, six, seven, eight, ten, 10, or no more than 12, 15 feet deep, so they're not necessarily down on the bottom. And also fishing around private piers, it's real good fishing this suspended. Uh, certain times of year, like uh, in the spring, uh, early spring, when the water starts warming up on the surface and the water is cold down below, the bass tends to come up towards the surface. And uh, then they're in a position, uh, they're not down on the bottom, they're up closer to the top where it's a little bit warmer. And you want to work your bait real slow through that that upper level, that midwater, where they're likely to be suspended, because they're more likely they won't be in that water bottom at that time of year. The water be a little too cold then. And also on bluffs, uh, deep lakes, where the uh, bluffs drop off just real, real, real deep. Uh, I'm talking about where they just drop on down to uh, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 feet in a, in a hurry. Well, we catch a lot of uh, bass, particularly smallmouth, suspended along those bluffs, not on the bottom. We just fish off in bluffs, and they may be suspended down. 8, 10, 12, 15 feet deep, but not on the bottom. So there's a lot of places they, they do suspend, and they can suspend for different reasons, often on the year, during the year in any kind of water, anywhere. Actually, a lot of the bass are picking it off before the bait ever gets to the bottom, like you say. You know, we've been fishing together now over 25 years, I think. Uh, you think we'll catch any today? <laughs> We're going to try to, Foxy. Huh? I hope we live a long, long time and keep fishing together and having a lot of fun like we have in the past. i tell you one thing, we've had some dandy trips, haven't we? We sure have. And you know, Charlie, as we said earlier, this video is intended to be instructional, how-to, or training. And of course, that includes the fishing part. It's no different. Notice how different ones sweep the hook. It's nothing more than a long pull of the rod. And be sure to notice the different techniques of the bass men and bass women and the ways they fish the slider. I guess everybody sort of develops their own technique, Charlie. Oh, yeah, Foxy, they sure do. But uh, all good slider fishermen and fishing gals have uh, several things in common. They fish slowly, they're methodical, fish with good rhythm, and... Uh, they fish do nothing. In other words, they just don't add any extra fancy actions. They just don't fight it, just take it easy and relax. Yeah, they try to make that slider resemble nature, and you don't see nature turning flips and jumping up and down. <laughs> that's right, that's right, Foxy. You just, you don't want to overplay nature. Just take it easy and try to make your, your bait act natural and lifelike and just uh, swim it along in a lazy manner and enjoy yourself while you're doing it. And something important there, I think, we've mentioned, keep it light. Keep it light, and the lighter you can keep it, uh, the more fish you're gonna catch you. When you're fishing the slider, I've heard a lot of people complain and fuss when they start getting those sharp taps and bumps on their slider. How about that? Uh, no, you don't wanna jerk on those, Foxy. Uh, those are usually bluegill or uh, some kind of perch sunfish or some kind of uh, food fish, and they'll uh, a bean duck. So uh, they'll kind of hit and run, you know. When you're fishing on structures where you're getting a lot of activity, uh, a lot of bumps and taps and machine gunners, you're usually fishing on a good bass structure. So they, uh, we found them all to be pretty well together. Yeah, a lot of people want to know, Charlie, do you uh, use a swivel or snap to hook your slider on? Nope. We recommend tying it directly to the line. The less hardware you can have, the better it is. Foxy, she lost a pretty good fish right there. It popped her line. That proves you can't win them all. But you know, when you're fishing light lines, you need to trim back uh, pretty often. 
the lighter the line, the more you need to trim, especially when fishing uh, heavy stuff and around those rocks and concrete piers. I think you'll notice coming up here something we may have said earlier that light tackle is sporting equipment and it's not horsing equipment. You're absolutely right, Foxy. Now, she's into a big one right now, one of the biggest bass she's ever caught. And according to the amount of tape we shot on this, this fish, it was about five or six minutes. And uh, we'll get into, she'll get into another big one a little bit later on the film that I shot seven minutes of film on the tape on it. So it's a, it's a battle there for five or six minutes on this here. Just, of course, we got it, all of these fish you've seen have been edited and uh, they just cut shots and highlights and they've been cut way down, just showing parts of them. Now that one, uh, the other guide and the party watching her lay, uh, laying that fish and they all estimate to be about eight and a half pounds. And that just tickled her to death, of course. But uh, that was a real good fish. The key word seems to be slow. Slow, slow, slow. Well, when you're fishing a slider, always remember one thing. You never go wrong fishing slowly. Remember, always fish a slider slowly. It may be on the fast side of slow, or slightly on the slow side of slow, but always slowly, and always uh, with patience, and do nothing. No use in the adding extra action. Charlie, before I forget it, I'd just like to say thanks to you for originating and developing the slider technique. It's given me and thousands of other fishermen nationwide so much enjoyment. Thanks. I really appreciate that, Foxy, and thank you many, many times for your help and time in this video. Well, Foxy, it looks like another old four or five pounder. They make it look easy with light lines and small hooks. And you know, fellas, the gals, your kids, uh, your wife or girlfriend will catch their share of bass, including some good ones, if us guys would just slow down and give them a chance. In closing, and speaking for Foxy, the slider company, and myself, I would like to say we deeply appreciate you, your business, and support, and interest in slider fishing. We owe our success to great folks like you. In the meantime, let's button up our life jackets and kill switch, be courteous to our fellow boatmen on the lake and on the boat ramp, and let's make an effort not to litter our beautiful lakes. Good luck, good fishing, and thank you again for your time and interest in slider fishing.